You are my God, my holy God, and I'm so thankful. I'm so thankful. You are the love of my life. You're my king. You're my whole world. My everything. You are my God. And I'm so thankful. You are my God, my holy God, and I'm so thankful, I'm so thankful. You are the love of my life, you're my king, you're my whole world, my everything. You are my God, my holy God, and I'm so thankful. What a privilege today to have Apostle Sonia all the way from Florida here. And I've asked her to come and share. She's got something that very, very, very few people in the world has. And her grace is tangible. When she walks into a room, what's inside of her is very transferable, very real. And I asked her if she would share with us today. And uh, before she comes, I want to just say, there are many levels of life, many experiences in life. Wisdom is the ability to recognize a difference in people, difference in value, difference in purpose, difference in opportunity. The purpose of wisdom is to identify those worthy of honor. If you treat everybody the same, nobody was honored. Honor is celebration of difference. Rewarding of difference, promotion of difference, protecting of difference. Understanding is knowing the value of somebody's difference. Not one brother in Joseph's family valued his difference. Recognition of difference is kind of easy. Understanding the value of difference takes character, takes character. What's the value? One preacher has seven children. One of his children plays a piano at the nightclub 10 minutes from the church. One of his other children goes to the pulpit and starts preaching behind his father. Wisdom is recognizing a difference. Honor is rewarding difference. Understanding is knowing the value of difference. Very important. Very important. There's only one quality necessary in life for prosperity. Only one. If you have this quality, you'll never be broke a day in your life. Thank you. Thank you, Father. You've been so good. Thank 
you, thank you, thank you, Father. Because of you, I'm free. Thankful people never stay poor. Thankful people never stay poor. Isn't that powerful? Brother Mike, why do I have to be rich? Some people say, tithe. Other people say, work. Other people say, invest. Thank you. Thank you, Father. Armenia's here. Canada's just joined. Nigeria's just come on board. Tracy Singer. Yay, Tracy. Joyce. Georgia Thomas. Valerie says, I'm really excited to hear from Apostle Sonia. What a surprise. We're thrilled she's here. Amen. Apostle Sonia, this little light's on. This is here, and you are welcome to pour out every thought that comes to your heart, share. We're so thrilled you're here. What a rare joy. Thank you, Dr. You're here, you're here, and we're thrilled. Amen. Hello, everyone, and um, thank you so very much. I want to first thank Dr. Mike, um, who is my spiritual father, and I'm just so thankful and just in awe of just the opportunity to come and share with you today and um, just to um, have this space that God has given me. And I know that the presence of Dr. Mike in my life has been an absolutely rich reward, to say the least, and he's poured so very much into my life and um, I can't imagine it without him. I tell him that all the time, and I mean every word that I say. There's been um, something special that I've been given some thought to, and I've shared this with my spiritual daughters uh, many times, and I guess at some point in life, um, our focus changes. And I've begun to just think about what advantage I have to God for the kingdom in my presence on this earth. And that has consumed a great deal of my thinking and time because I want God to have an advantage with my presence here. And um, one of the scriptures that I've been focusing on is first Peter chapter two, verse nine. The Bible says that you're a chosen generation. You are a royal priesthood, a holy nation, his own special people that you may proclaim praises of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light, who once were not a people. But you are now the people of God who had not obtained mercy, but now you have obtained mercy. So I focus there because looking at that and, and looking at the kingdom advantage, I have to, to see here that uh, the Lord has called me out with purpose. I have one purpose in life and it is not Arise Ministries. That's my ministry. It is not Arise Women or our Apostolic Network. It's not even to write books. My one purpose that is key focus for me that I keep high on the scale is to show forth the praises of him who's called me out of darkness into light, that I can take as many people as possible and introduce them to the goodness of God, to the knowledge of God, to the wisdom of God, 
And one of the key uh, things in doing that is you have to be connected with people who walk in that wisdom, who walk in um, that revelation and light of God. And I thank God for Dr. Mike because he is one of the, after my husband, one of the key men in my life. And um, I give all my focus to his teachings because he has a ministry that pulls people out of darkness and brings them to the light of God. You're going to have to have somebody to teach you that. So we can say, uh, you know, this is my purpose. But now that I've made it a focus of my life, then somebody's going to have to teach me how to pull people out of darkness and, and pull them into the marvelous light of God. That's what I'm called to do. I'm not called to bring attention to Apostle Sonia Thompson or to my ministry focus. My purpose is that when I open my mouth, when I teach, when I write a book, everything that I do is to reconcile believers back to Jesus Christ. That's my whole purpose. And I don't lose sight of that. And I believe that will keep your life. It sure keeps my life in a place of purity and a place of humility. And um, I thank God for a Dr. Mike who continues to bring revelation in this regard, because he is definitely a man that reconciles. Uh, I never had a spiritual father in my life, never. Um, and this man has shown himself to be a father. And because he's done that, he's, he's reconciled, um, you know, some things in my life and brought such great wholeness to me as a result of that. So what he did was he pulled me out of obscurity and thinking, uh, pulled me out of darkness, not just when it, uh, we think of that when it comes to sin, but where revelation isn't flowing, there's going to be darkness. So wherever revelation flows, light bursts forth. Don't ever forget that. And I have a saying that says revelation is not reality because revelation is only a peek into and an opportunity for you to see what is your reality. The Bible says that it's the entrance of the word of God that brings light. So this is the picture that the Lord gave to me is it's the equivalent of opening the blinds in your kitchen. You know how you open it up and the light comes uh, in and you can, you know, see you can pretty much see everything, anything on the floor that you didn't get cleaned up or anything like that. You, that light comes in. But if I take and and pull the cords of those blinds, guess what happens? The light is now shut off. So this is why I say revelation is not reality and the entrance of the word will bring light. But it's our job when Dr. Mike is teaching or when God has stationed you any place to receive the pure um, word of God, the milk of God, the meat of God. It's your job. It's my job to keep those cords pulled open so that the revelation light of God can can continue to flow through. And this is where you're going to see your life growing and growing. Dr. Mike has taught so many powerful lessons and um, I can't take it whenever I miss some of his teachings because I know that God has revelation for me. There's light that's going to shine. That's going to light my path to take me into a greater degree of revelation and to my destiny. And this has to be the way that we come before such an amazing, amazing man of God who pours out his life. Um, to take us to a place where we're being pulled out of darkness and into light. He takes his assignment very seriously. He's very serious about every word that he speaks. And I treasure every word this man of God says. And there are many times where he'll say something online to me personally. And I'm going to tell you what I do. And I would encourage you to do the same. If he ever takes the time to address you online, go back to the recording and record it. This is what I do. This is how I encourage myself in the Lord. This is how light begins to come through in dark days and dark times when I'm having those days. I listen to the voice of my spiritual father. It encourages me. It lifts my heart up and it reminds me of my purpose in life uh, as well. I'm also a teacher when it comes to wisdom. So my assignment is wisdom and prosperity with purity. Purity is very, very important to me. I will not connect to anything or to anybody. I don't care how uh, talented they are, how anointed they are. I don't care how much money they have, what their purpose and or what their uh, position is in life. I will not connect to anything that is not pure. My spiritual daughters that are close to me walk in that same purity and I will accept nothing less. And this is why I love Dr. Mike. So even the purity that he walks in makes that light of purity in my life shine even greater and brighter. Let me tell you, if you're going to um, really, really be uh, a person that 
is an advantage to the kingdom of God, you're going to have to connect yourself with people that are like minded. You know, there's a lot of people running after a lot of different things, especially in ministry. Uh, everybody wants a platform. We all want to be known. Uh, but um, the only person that really needs to be known is God. The only person that we need to uh, permit to have a light to shine is God. And you need to connect with people like that. And so that's why I am very confident in uh, my assignment under Dr. Mike Murdoch. My spiritual daughter and I, we took a drive here, um, and I believe it's about 1,600 miles because of the voice of the Holy Spirit. Nothing was going on to the natural eye, but in the realm of the Spirit, the Holy Spirit said, pick up and go to the Wisdom Center or to um, now uh, Pastor Anna's church, um, what Wisdom for Winning. And he says, go there. And we packed up our bags and we came and look at God. Here I am addressing you. But we had a glorious encounter in the presence of God. And we were among a people of purity. And I assure you today, this scripture found me that I was taken out of darkness. And now I'm not talking sin or obscurity, but I couldn't see the rest of my path that God was taking me to. He gave me a word. And then this, uh, as, as we're worshiping this morning, oh my God, there was such a presence of glory in the atmosphere that I had to grab my spiritual daughter, Prophet Natalie's arm, and she travels with me and I thank God for her. I had to grab her arm because I wasn't gonna be able to stay on my feet. And I felt a weight drop on me once and then twice. And I had to go to my knees because the presence of God is there and it's so pure. And it's places like that and people like that, if you will uh, align yourself like that, you're going to be able to fulfill this scripture of being a royal priesthood, a holy nation, um, a people that can proclaim the, place, uh, the praises of him that brought you out of darkness into his marvelous light. This is our purpose in life. This has to be our focus. Uh, there's a lot of things that we run after with God and the Holy Spirit just reminded me of something Years ago, I used to live in Orlando, Florida, and I was in a lot of debt. Uh, my son, I believe, was about two, two and a half, and I joke a lot when I teach. They talk about um, the kids have the terrible twos. Well, his terrible twos, he didn't have them. I had the terrible twos. So uh, during his age of two, there was a lot that went on in, that changed my life. God really, really did some things with me. One of them was the beginning of coming out of debt. And once we did all that, uh, we ended up purchasing a home in Mineola, Florida, which is where I, I live. We built a house there and we paid off all our debt. And the Holy Spirit asked me a question because I'm a pursuer of God and I'm a, I'm a pursuer of men and women who pursue God. And he asked me a question one day. He says, now that you've got everything that you need, are you still going to come to me? Are you still going to pursue me? And I said, yes, sir, I, I will do just that. And I've been doing that uh, the, to the best of my ability all my life. And that pursuit of God and the people of God, and I don't care what distance you have to travel, make it your business to get where God is at, get where he's moving. Uh, I know that he's in us, but you need to be in places where there's a manifest presence of God and that there's wisdom being taught because we are in an age now where we're seeing a lot of great men of God. Um, somehow the enemy is pulling the cloak of darkness over their eyes where the foundational truths that we know are, are sound and scriptural, they are breaking those foundations and coming up with new revelation that is not from the Holy Spirit. And it's important to be connected with people who can rightly divide the word, who walk in the light of the revelation of the wisdom of God so that we can show forth the goodness of our God. So you wanna get yourself to a place like that and continue to pursue the revelation and the knowledge of God. We spend a lot of time, as I was leading to, really seeking the hand of God. And we do this a lot with the Lord. And I used to be one of those people, you know, wanting to get out of debt and all the promises of Scripture. And I want to give you an easy escape from all of your pursuit is just pursue God, pursue wisdom, stick with people that um, love God with all their heart, soul and mind, that live a pure life, that refuse to participate in gray areas. If you're going to show forth the praises of God and uh, bring people into that light, this is what you're going to need to do. And continue to, to uh, run after him, continue to walk after him. And then Matthew 6, will burst forth in your life. And I am a recipient of that, where God says, if you seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, 
He's an adder. He said, I will add these things to you while everybody else is running after things. This is what the wicked do. He said they run after this stuff, but they haven't figured out if they would just sell out to me and give me the whole heart, everything that they desire. God is going to see that it gets added to your table because, you know, he's preparing a table for you in the presence of your enemies. And if you're out trying to prepare your own table, you don't need God. And he will take and prepare that table before you as you are pursuing him with all your heart. Make that your focus. Obviously, we must know the laws of God. If we're going to show forth the praises of him who called us out of darkness and show God the advantage that we have in this earth, we must become proficient with the laws of God. We're good at praising. Uh, we're good at quoting scriptures, but we must learn how to apply this word to our lives. So it can uh, give you an example. This could be the equivalent of going. I like to shop. So I'm going to give you a shopping example. I was sharing with my, my daughter, Prophet Natalie, and some uh, one of my other daughters that I don't window shop. I don't like window shopping. If I go shopping, I'm buying something. And that's how I am with God. If I'm going to sit in the presence of God, if I'm going to sit under a great man of God like Dr. Mur Mur Murdoch, who is just continually flowing in such wisdom, I'm not coming to just window shop. I'm coming to take what is coming forth and I'm going to put this on and I'm going to wear this so that I can look like kingdom and show forth the praises of him who's called me out of darkness into his marvelous light. This is what we're supposed to be doing. And it's not going to come just by a worship service. It's not going to come just by your reading, uh, but you're going to need people that you can connect yourself to that walk in the light. You can't give someone something you don't have. And this is very important um, for you to remember that. So uh, this is something that I wanted to share with you. And I, and I, I really want that to, uh, you know, that the body of Christ would make that a focus. When we get our hearts and mind back on God, when we shift our attention also back to prayer. This is another thing I love about Dr. Mike Murdoch. He does not um, he doesn't waste God's space with uh, things that are unnecessary. He, he takes a great deal of time in prayer. Prayer is the gasoline if you will, for the uh, vehicle of, of the body of Christ. If you're not birthing everything in prayer, you are wasting your time. You're going to go through uh, so much trial and error when one moment of prayer would have given you the answer that God needs to give you to change your entire life. And we have to get back to being a people who pray the heart of the Father. And this is another way that we take people out of darkness into his marvelous light. Because uh, to, if the truth is told, there are a, uh, a lot of people who are saying a lot of things that God's not saying. Uh, there's a lot of um, abuse, if you can, if I could use that word, of the word of God not being handled skillfully. And this is why so many people um, are not seeing abundant lives, not walking in the light of um, this gospel and not being a mirror image of scripture. And this is what we're supposed to do. This is going to be attractive to people your Gucci belts and your red bottom shoes. That's, that's not how we draw people to Christ. We draw them by the truth of the word of God, by revelation knowledge, by the light of Christ that will enlighten them to see um, the goodness of our great God through, not through just material things. And that's an added benefit, but through a life changed, there's no greater miracle than a life change that I love how Dr. Mike uh, mentions that when we open the Bible, and, uh, and I'm paraphrasing this, that we can open up the scripture and we can see a man's life totally change. This is proof that there is a God, that I can take this marvelous book and all of a sudden, and I can use myself, a person that was an alcoholic, uh, a person that was, and I have to use the word, a whoremonger, a person who walked in rage and anger, becomes a person that can walk in love, walk in purity, uh, walk in restraint, walk in honor when it comes to my husband uh, and my family. This can only happen by the word of God. And this is what God is wanting us to do to permit the word of God to get in us. And we can keep the cords of our uh, mind open up. And I'm talking about our soul, our, our mind, our emotions and will open long enough for that light to begin to penetrate us and to begin to work its way from the inside on the outside uh, to bring great change to many people's lives. And so I just wanted that to uh, share that with you, that that would be a focus for you and for your life. And also just to, again, to admonish you that when you, you pull up on this live, don't take it as a, a time of entertainment uh, or a time where Dr. Mike can call your name out.
get your pens out, get your notebooks out, or go back to the recordings and glean from this powerful word. There is not one time that I have gotten on a live to listen to Dr. Mike Murdoch where I haven't gotten an answer, where I haven't uh, gotten peace. Uh, and, and yet last week, I, this was a dark day for me one day. And this man of God gave a word and it was powerful. Then I turned around and got a call from uh, Miss Renee Poole, who is just an incredible woman of God. I love it every time I hear her voice. And she shared a scripture that was one that was a pivotal point in my life. And all I could do getting off that phone was just fall, just to, to fall down and just thank God for this mighty man of God. And uh, it's not by coincidence that that was one of the scriptures that was picked that day. Um, remember that everything about God is purposeful. It's purposeful. Treat every relationship with purpose and handle it uh, with great, great care. And I believe in stewarding relationships very well, knowing where to, your space is, uh, but gleaning from those that God has called you to. Don't get casual with this mighty man of God. I'm telling you, he is pouring out and I admire him so. A lot of times I think I'm like, God, I must not be doing enough. This man of God is 76 years old and he is on alive every single day unless it's just it has to be an actual absolute impossibility for him not to come on. And uh, he will pour and pour and pour. I don't know. I'm, I'm not just saying this because I'm speaking. I would not lie before the Lord. I don't know a man of God like him. Not one. Not one. And his purity and the wisdom he walks in and his unrestrained love for the body of Christ is is just overwhelming. And I could weep just saying it. Uh, every time I think about him, every every comment he makes on Twitter, I take it to heart because I know he's not a man that um, he doesn't throw his words away. They, they have a great impact. They've impacted my heart greatly. And uh, I hang on those words. I'm here to tell you, do that. Take the words. You know how you you really satisfy a teacher, somebody that pours out. And this is what I've learned from Dr. Mike to keep these kind of people close to you. I don't spend time with people that uh, just want to tell me all about their life. I'm concerned about their life, but I've got to have something to deposit to you. And this is where we become stagnant. Even as leaders, we are trying to pour in everybody's cup. I'm not called to everybody's cup. Dr. Mike's not called to pour in everybody's cup, but I'm one of those cups that he's called to pour into. And I pull up every single time to receive. And I have people in my life that um, they're receivers. I learned this from Dr. Mike, from Dr. Mike. Because we, we get an assignment from God and we just run with it and we think it's for everybody. It's, everybody's not going to receive what you have. They didn't even receive what Jesus had. And he knew Jesus had enough sense to know to leave that place and go someplace else and find receivers. And I learned this from Dr. Mike as well. And uh, so I just want to share that with you. And um, again, uh, just thank you, uh, Dr. Mike, so very much for giving me this opportunity uh, for that. And, and I do want to admonish you also just finally to... Take time and focus, say, God, get up tomorrow, maybe even today after this live and say, Holy Spirit, what advantage do I have here? Think about that. Are you giving God an advantage with your presence in this earth? And if you're, you find that you're not, make it your business to make your life purposeful and um, apply the wisdom and word of God that you can bring that light to others and, and bring them out of darkness to Christ and also out of dark areas that, uh, where they need revelation to come into their destiny. Thank you so much. God bless you. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. My word, thank the Lord, thank the Lord. You want to go back and listen to this over and over again. She's got something inside of her that's so powerful, so powerful. My favorite book that I've written is called The Law of Recognition. I told a little bit about it yesterday. And Oh, uh, let me take a few moments, a few moments here before we pray. 
in my book, The Difference in Men, which I really am impacted by, the difference in men is the voice they honor, the voice they trust. The difference in men is how quickly they apologize. The difference in men is their reaction to people in pain. The difference in men is the price they'll pay for mentorship. The difference in men is what they're willing to ignore. A book that went around the world was called Acres of Diamonds. Acres, A-C-R-E-S, by Russell Conwell. He was the first preacher I know of that had an understanding of financial blessing, provision. And we'd go from city to city and meet with about 2,000 people. And uh, that book, Acres of Diamonds, is worth reading or just to lay there and listen to it on audio. Sometimes I've just listened to an audio. In that book, and I want you to hear this carefully, hear this carefully. He told about the gold rush, 1840s, 1850s, 60s, during that Abraham Lincoln time, but people begin to find gold in creeks, under the soil, occasionally something above the water. And uh, a young couple decided they would go search for gold. They ended up in England with broke years later. After many years, they came back and said, let's go back to America. And they borrowed some money because they were broke in their search for gold. When they came back, their farm was completely surrounded by government soldiers because underneath their house, was the second largest gold mine on the American continent. I think it was called Sutter's Mill, S-U-T-T-E-R-S, Sutter's Mill. There's something God's put close to you that you're not looking at. There's something God's put around you you're not seeing. Joseph had brothers that could not see his greatness. David had just got through killing a bear and a lion with his bare hands and his slingshot. He shows up at the Goliath camp to bring his brothers some food and he hears Goliath cursing and he turns to his brothers and said, what's the reward system for killing that guy? They told him, but they got mad at him. So he turned and asked somebody else, you should also always verify a reward system. Always verify, confirm, document a reward system. And they said, there's basically three rewards. No more taxes. Never have to pay taxes the rest of your life if you kill Goliath. Number two, there's a pile of money. Saul has a big pile of money. He's going to give to whoever kills him. And number three, he gets to marry the daughter of the king. And he gets, of course, free housing, free everything. There were three rewards for killing Goliath. David said, I'll be back. David was very reward conscious. Very reward conscious. Very much like our father. Every time God gives an instruction, he comes back and says, this is what I'm going to do when you do it. When you do this, this is what I'm going to do when you do it. 
There's 10 commandments, all of them about one word, honor. The first four deal with honoring God. The last six deal with honoring people. The first one with the reward is number five, where it said, if you loved your mother and father, treat them right. It would go well with you all the days of your life. And I've taught this many times. God's first decision about your life was which womb would he put you inside? There's not one single doubt in my mind that the way you treat your mother and your father have everything to do with your money world, your blessing world, a better world, divine favor. God doesn't like everybody and I don't either. God likes everybody. No, he doesn't. Look up K-O-R-A-H. Look up Ananias and Sapphira. Look up Elijah's reaction when they made fun of his bald head. No, no, God does like everybody the same. Apostle Sonia, a few days ago, one of the greatest morning revelations of my life. Was when I began to inv investigate or analyze the seriousness of people's pursuit of favor. Everybody wants favor. There's not 3% people will invest to get it. There's not one person, good, bad, ugly, beautiful, fat, skinny, bony, not one person doesn't want favor with everybody. But if you start researching what their investment has been to secure favor. You're going to text one of your people and say, I need some extra typing today. Can you give me two or three hours? And they'll say, I've already made other plans. They will not make one investment in your favor. Do they want your favor? Sure. They even like your money more than your favor. They like your money 10 times more than they like you. But somewhere along the road, today I, God moved me to pray for five people, for every one of my family, five people whose loyalty, trustworthiness, consistency, Availability, proximity, pursuit would confirm that person put great value on their favor. Now the devil even likes your money. Even the devil likes your money. But who wants your favor? And what's the proof? A young man told me the other day that I was being very harsh with because none of my money and love had, had, had helped him. So I used my harshness since, since thousands of my dollars hadn't helped him, made him better. I thought I'll use harshness and see if that works. Kind of like God uses hell, you know. Heaven don't excite you, so let me see if hell will excite you. <laughs> And he started crying. I said, you don't love me at all. Now, fortunately, I don't need his love, you know. His love doesn't add anything for me. <laughs> fortunately. Yeah, it's most people's love. You don't need it all. You don't need, you, you, if they love you, your life doesn't change one iota. There's many people that can love you, and your life never improves no matter what. 
But he started crying. He says, don't say I don't love you. I said, give me three reasons why I should believe you love me. Three reasons. Even parrots can say I love you. Parakeets can say I love you. Even a dog wags his tail, so, you know, there's nothing. But the favor of God is everything. The favor of God. There's three major pleasures for God. One's creativity, of course, Revelation 4.11. But what makes God smile? Without faith. With faith, without faith, it's impossible to pleasure God. You're going to have five or six people in your family and only one of them's going to want to, only one of them's want to, wants to invest in your pleasure. Only one. Maybe two. Maybe one. Powerful, isn't it? I want to pray over everybody that's watching. Our many is here, Canada, Ghana, Jamaica, Japan, Nigeria, Spain. Sherry Wages. Sherry Wages here. Sherry sold a house and property to our ministry. By the way, Sherry, I never told you, but I re-sowed all of that. Every penny that you gave me, Sherry, I sowed as a seed. I didn't keep one dollar of that house and land, not one dollar. One of the most wonderful things about a harvest is that you have a new collection of seeds. That's glorious. Every time God gives you a harvest, I know we think, oh, I'm spinning it all. No, 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 no. It's new seed to sow. It's new seed to sow. Brian, Nicole, Stephen, Raleigh, North Carolina, Clovia, Julie Kendrick, Jacques. Jacques, you have treated my favor like it was valuable to you. One of the few people in the world. Jacques, I love both. He looks for every opportunity. No opportunity like that. Evangelist Julius, Tracy Singer, David Trujillo, the greatest room on earth. David, I asked Christina, my wife, a couple of days ago if she liked the phrase, the wisdom room. The wisdom room. Praise God. Father, I ask you for 12 people today, 12 who will sow a $112 seed from Psalms 112 for 12 months. You know who they are. I ask you for a 90-day turnaround. Give them a testimony worthy of writing a book about it. I ask you for 12, the number of government and authority, who will sow a $112 seed every month for 12 months. Your sheep know your voice. I ask you for, for several preachers who will sow a $112 seed out of their missions department to help me stay on the radio in Jerusalem, Israel, television, and to maintain our staff. I ask you for 12 who will sow a $112 seed. I ask you for a Peter, James, and John who will sow a $1,000 seed within the next 90 days. They know who they are. That $1,000 seed purchases airtime for a million homes to hear the gospel on TV. I ask you for three, Peter, James, and John, who will sow a $1,000 seed in the next 90 days. Give them a testimony beyond anything they've ever known for your glory. Amen. Amen.
Thank you all so much for being with us today. This is precious to me. It's holy time. It's listening time. And Apostle Sonia, thank you, thank you, thank you for taking the time to come by here today. It means the world to me. We value it. Love your heart. Love your heart. Love your, love your passion for learning. Drinking in the wisdom of God. I have a craving for wisdom. I have a craving for it. And I have a love for people that's indescribable. A love for people. We're showing you on the screen the ways that you can sow into our ministry. And while you're here, I want to do about a three minute talk about finances for your world, for your life. Money. Some people say money won't make you happy. Then you never know what to do with it. That's the whole goal of money is to make you happy. If your money's not making you happy, evidently you're not eating anything. Because usually when you eat, you feel good, don't you? Usually you pay money to buy food. That's the whole role of money is joy. That's the reason for it. That's why God promises it to you if you covenant with him. Money answereth all things. Money buys your house, your car, gas, clothes. Evidently you're wanting to run around naked because if you really love clothes, you would love money. You'd like money. I know we're not supposed to say love, but you would put a value on that. But I want to say to the 300 people I've asked the Lord to make millionaires. I just chose the phrase millionaire. Now I call it blessing 300 because so many people go into anxiety when they say the word millionaire. They feel like they've got to come up with a lot of money. It was just a level. But I want to pray for those who have a desire to bless people, bless your pastor, send your daughter to college. Let me give you five things to remember. Number one, somebody has a problem and when you solve it, they give you money. Number two, some of the greatest books ever written, Think and Go Rich. The Magic of Thinking Big, How to Win Friends, Influence People, Law of Recognition, 31 Secrets of the Richest Man Who Ever Lived. Read, read. When Bill Gates was worth 79 billion, he wrote a book and I read one sentence and it changed my entire ministry. Learn from anybody everybody, good people, bad people, but also learn from rich people. Wisdom key, MM, WKMM. Those who have something you don't have know something you don't know. The first proof of humility is the willingness to ask a question. The first proof of humility is the willingness to reach, the willingness to listen. Some of you have spent $500 a month on a car, but you hadn't spent $5 to buy a book. It's okay, it's okay. I would never spend more money on a car than I would my brain. God gave me a brain to picture my future. And he gave me a listening ear to learn from others. Father, thank you for your presence, your goodness. Thank you for Apostle Sonia. I ask you to give us goals, imagination, Help us to picture the next season of our life. And Father, I ask you to 
Replace all our arrogance with admiration. Please replace our arrogance with admiration. Amen. Amen. Arrogance creates distance. Admiration creates proximity, closeness. And your whole future is being determined by the person you've chosen to admire. We're going to show you a couple of videos. God willing, we'll see you tomorrow at 12 o'clock noon. And uh, we'll show you a couple of videos. I want to do something. It's five minutes till six. And anybody that calls any of these three numbers by 615, I'm going to send you all three books, all three hardbacks for $15. It's uh, book 188, The Wisdom Library of Mike Murdoch, volume three. Volume six, The Wisdom Library of Mike Murdoch, volume six. The Wisdom Library of Mike Murdoch, volume four. Anyone that calls by 6.15 tonight, it's five minutes till six. We have our prayer team waiting for your phone call. 817-759-BOOK, 844-789-SEED. And the 12 people that are joining the 112 covenant, the 12 people that are joining the 112 covenant or the Jerusalem Project, helping me be on the radio. Those 12 people that call by 7 o'clock tonight, I'm sending you 500 books, 500 books I've written on an e-book reader. These three books, only $15 if you call by 6.15. Jim Mason says, I love the prayer world. Cindy Young, I'm standing with you especially for Angela. Jacques says, I will be one of your millionaire 300. I believe that. Dr. Brown, lifetime learner. I love those words. I love, love, love. Pastor John in Canada, I miss seeing you. God bless you. Here's our video, and I hope you call by 650. There are seven books for women that I'm giving for every person who plants a $58 seed. One's called 31 Secrets of an Unforgettable Woman. I cried and cried in a restaurant as I was reading the book of Ruth. I called one of my baby sisters and told her, I said, you will not believe what I found out in the book of Ruth. It's book 57, every person who plants a $58 seed to help me on television, my radio ministry in Israel every, every week, who helps me with my staff, every person who helps me with a $58 seed. I'm sending you seven books. It's called Woman Seven, Woman Seven. The Proverbs 31 Woman, it's book 49. That's one of the seven books. The Uncommon Mother, Book 132, The Uncommon Wife, Book 210. Out of this world, I've spent thousands of hours writing. The book, My Mother and Her Legacy. I had a fabulous mother, master conversationalist, genius, really. I did not know until her passing, you know, as you, some of you know that after they die, all of their greatness becomes apparent. But while somebody's in your house, what you keep seeing, you stop seeing. And they sometimes have to die before you put real value. Book 315, My Mother and the Lady. The Uncommon Woman, Book 146. All seven of these books 
I am sending to you, shipping to you for a $58 seed. That's here in America. I, I'm not able to do that with all these books all over the world. I wish I could, but I can't. But you can download from my website every one of these books you can download. Amen. Teachable.